What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our Doodle Jump series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part 1, please watch it before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched part 1, in which case you should have a little bit coded within your Doodle Jump game, but there isn't really that much done since, well, there are just clones over a particular position. In this video, we'll be fixing that so that we have, you know, an entire game platform set up if you want to think about it, and we'll also code a little bit of our Doodle Jump guy. Let's get right into it. So at the end of part one, we had a bunch of clones we created, but we didn't really do anything about them. So uh, if I'm first going to start with a when I start as a clone script. And uh, here we need to initialize a clone. And uh, to do that, I'm going to create a new function. And I'm going to call this init clone. And uh, I'm just not going to set it to run without screen refresh because this is going to uh, slow us down drastically instead of speeding us up. Because we want this to happen parallelly while the doodle jump guy can move. So you can call this init clone and uh, within this you just need some pretty similar stuff actually when compared to uh, when compared to the begin function. So I'm going to uh, start off with set rotation style to left to right and uh, yep there we go set rotation style to left to right. Um, you can add in an if on edge bounce I think that isn't really that I'm just going to go ahead and add it. So after this you need a show. Uh, but before that, you also need to go to some particular position and it is going to be just like the way we had it here. I'm going to duplicate this, but I'm going to go to a random position in the X axis. So I'm going to say go to X and um, I'm going to operators and pick random from negative 230 to positive 230. So there's a pretty huge, I mean, difference of where the X can be. So positive 230, there we are. And uh, after this, I'm actually going to put this in the right. And after this, we need to set up one variable, all right? And uh, this variable is going to be called number and you want to set it to this sprite only. And what this variable is going to do is have a difference within our platforms. So we'll have some platforms that are moving across the screen while some that are staying stationary. Now, the way I'm going to do it is if um, the number is either one or not one, if the number is either two or three, then it's going to be a stationary one. But if the number is one, then it'll basically be going all around. That's going to be the general idea. So here I'm going to set number to be pick random once again, one to three. So this is going to make sure that the number is different for every, it's not different for every single clone, but it's going to be unique. Uh, it's going to be a unique identifier every clone. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to put in the clone in it right there. After this, I'm going to put in a forever loop. And uh, within this loop, I'm going to create another function. And uh, this function is going to be called clone movement. And uh, pretty much just like what it says, it's going to be moving the clone around. So after that, you can click OK. And uh, within this define clone movement, I'm actually going to put this below. Uh, you're going to have two other functions. But before that, we will be having a condition check. So if the clone number or just the number in our case is equal to one, then we will be performing one function, which is going to be called, I'll call it sway. And um, if the number is not one, then I'll just, uh, I'll just be performing this increment score function. So now let's code in the sway function. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two repeat uh, 50s from the control section. So one repeat 50 and another repeat 50. And um, each of these times, I'm just going to be moving uh, in the X axis. There's going to be no movement within the Y. So I'm going to say change x by negative 2 um, or, or rather I'll first be changing x by positive 2. So change x by 2. Then I'll add in an if on edge bounce. And finally, I'll also put the increment score block right here. And that also reminds me to put in the sway function up above since we haven't added it if the number is 1. So if the, um, I mean, uh, for the second repeat 50, we'll just do the opposite thing. And you can actually see it move right there because I think we clicked on a show script earlier. So I'm going to say negative two for now. And uh, this is going to ensure that you move the opposite way whenever, well, whenever, you know, the sway function is called. Finally, I'm going to do one last thing here. And um, this is going to happen when we receive a particular message. And uh, I just realized that we didn't really put in anything here. And 
All we need to do is put in the clone movement um, block. And after this, uh, I'll be having uh, when I receive and I'm going to make a new message. And this message is going to be called scroll down. And since tool jump is essentially a scrolling game, this is what actually controls the scrolling of the of all these platforms in the Y axis. So in this way too, I'm going to have two functions. I'm going to have first, uh, I'll be calling this scroll. And uh, after this, I'll be making another function. This time I'll be calling this function as switch. And uh, this is basically going to restart this entire, you know, clone number thingy. And uh, we decide to choose again, which, uh, which platform clones move about and which don't. So you can click OK now. And um, oopsie, I didn't want to do that. All right, so within this uh, scroll, you just have to put in first, uh, scroll down, put, first put in the scroll block, and then uh, grab the switch block and put it after that. Now we have to define the functions, and since we really don't have that much to code, I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to say define scroll, and scroll is going to be possibly the simplest uh, function you're going to see. So we're going to repeat 50, I'm sorry, repeat 10, and uh, we're going to change y by negative 5 each time. And the reason I'm not just changing uh, y by 50 at once is so that we have a little more gentle, you know, kind of scrolling. And uh, I will be doing the same thing in the Doodle Jump Guy whenever we have the scrolling set up. So uh, I'm going to set, uh, no, not change Y by 50, change Y by negative 5. And uh, within the switch function, we're going to reset the number once again. And we're also going to go to this particular position. So you can duplicate that from the init clone. And you don't really even have to um, put a show there because well, our clones are never really going to hide. So this they are going to be shown all along and there are always going to be, in my case, eight clones in the screen. So, well, this is pretty much all you need to do. And um, by definition, by default, if you have switch in place, then while you're executing the clone movement script, you're either going to have the sway or the increment score. So we don't really have to do any additional coding with respect to that. All right, so now I'm going to import the doodle jump guy and within uploads, uh, within choose a sprite, click on upload sprite. And there are two costumes for our Doodle Jump guy, left and right. I'm first going to put the left costume and um, then I'll be uploading the right costume on its on the costumes of the Doodle Jump guy. And as you can see, that guy is pretty massive, okay? So you need to set the size to be 10 and this may look small right now, but when we start the game and press the play button, you can see that it's actually a pretty decent size fit with our platforms. And you can see already that the first part of our game looks pretty decent. And while we still don't have that much coded into our total jump guy, we've still made some progress. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.